Hello, my name is Thomas Cecil. I'm representing Synopsys, and today, as part of the EBIM initiative, I'll be giving this presentation on curvilinear mass synthesis trends. Today, more than ever before, there is a push towards curvilinear mass synthesis. This is being driven by the pursuit of Moore's law, as well as more than more applications. The logic and memory manufacturer's quest for smaller, faster, lower power and lower cost devices is what keeps Moore's law going. This is pushing design CDs smaller and creating denser layouts with smaller process windows that can benefit from curvilinear correction solutions like ILT. On the other end of the spectrum are photonics and display manufacturers. And although they are not pursuing Moore's law, they are also contributing to the move towards curvilinear processing with the introduction of today's <clears throat> in, the, the, in the industry's first curvilinear designs. These designs require mass synthesis processing, including layer operations, RETs, and proximity correction tools that can handle curvilinear designs. The drive to smaller, denser features is creating challenges for lithography. There's a growing gap between the exposure lay wavelength and the minimum feature size. This is resulting in lower contrast and lower K1, while at the same time, design density is leaving less room for conventional OPC. The combined impact is smaller process windows, causing increased susceptibility to failure due to process variation. The lithography challenges are compounded by the manufacturing requirements that have added support for curvilinear designs and where CD control gets tighter with each new technology node, making correction consistency even more important. The CDU and other requirements in the industry are scaling down as the device nodes shrink, demanding tighter CD and mass consistency. For advanced curvilinear designs, such as photonics, although they may have larger feature widths, the accuracy demands are just as tight as the device performance depends on precise control of light within the complex structures. There are several options for addressing lithography requirements. Lithography hardware improvements to support smaller wavelengths and enable higher resolution for printing smaller, denser designs is one option. This option provides the best resolution, but it comes with substantial hardware costs. New design and litho technique, techniques, such as buried power rails or super vias, as well as multi-patterning and other patterning techniques, have the potential to relax design density and improve image contrast for better CD control. This extends the life of existing hardware, but they can introduce additional mask steps, which add cost and more manufacturing time. Software can compensate for proximity effects to maximize the process window and CD stability on existing hardware. It is readily available today, and although it doesn't change the resolution of the hardware, it does enable the optimal use of the available resolution and comes in at the lowest cost. Curvilinear mass synthesis with ILT is the ideal software solution. In this plot, we show how through pitch contact arrays have superior depth of focus once the design pitch is large enough for the ILT curvilinear mass to have enough room to differentiate themselves from OPC masks. For example, through the placement of curvilinear cis features. The depth of focus margin can be significant and make the difference between a reliably and unreliably yielding design. In the next figure, we look at random logic designs and can see by looking at the histogram over hundreds of different measurements locations that the curvilinear ILT depth of focus is larger, shifting the mean of the distribution by almost a full standard deviation relative to the Manhattan and OPC RBF mass solution. 
The complexity and unpredictability of these logic designs means that rule-driven solutions will have difficulty covering all variations, and the shrinking MRC rules and sensitive NTD resist mean that Manhattan masks will have difficulty fitting into all the areas without printing side lobes. ILT is also being accelerated with leading edge hardware and software tools as the ILT pixel-based mass synthesis algorithms are ready adapt readily adaptable to GPUs and machine learning. The parallel nature of many pixel-based algorithms used for ILT curve linear processing means they're readily adaptable to GPU accelerable code such as CUDA. Also, there are many readily available machine learning tools which have been tuned for image processing. And the mass synthesis arena can be thought of as a large scale inverse image processing problem space. Here we show a process variation histogram where a machine learning ILT has been used to model a full ILT solution, resulting in very comparable litho quality with runtime that is comparable to traditional RBAF and OPC solutions. Training of the machine learning models can be done on GPU as well. Marrying these two leading edge tools to accelerate the total package from training through inference. Also, cloud computing is becoming more accepted for mass synthesis runs, making advances in hardware less of a headache to manage and predict for ILT users. ILT provides a natural solution with its native curvilinear processing. Although traditionally ILT had focused on small area applications, such as hotspots and repeated bit cells, there have been recent advances in mass manufacturing to better accommodate curvilinear masks with the rollout of multi-beam mask riders and significant ILT runtime reduction which is driving the adoption of ILT beyond the use of memory bit cells and hotspots to full chip applications. Here we show how for a full design, we can build a hybrid flow, which takes the input layout and identifies different regions, either hierarchy or re repetition characteristics into memory cells, where curvilinear cell level ILT can be done. Also, memory core transition regions with less repeated repetition than the SRAM area, where curvilinear ILT can be done. And then periphery regions on the outside, where curvilinear rule based assist feature or OPC can be done. Here we're showing a zoom in to the curvilinear cell level ILT area, showing the mass complexity, which can be handled by today's multi beam mask writers, and also the symmetry, which can be found and enforced within the design if the litho process allows for it. All of these pieces can be put together into a final solution, which can be checked by a litho rule check, which will efficiently optimize the use of the computational resources, splitting the work between some ILT solutions and some curvilinear OPC and rule-based assist feature solutions. All of these solutions can build upon the previously touched upon topics of machine learning and GPU in their frameworks. Curvilinear mass manufacturing challenges have been addressed as multi-beam mask writers fully support high volume manufacturing of ILT masks. Early on, mass complexity created challenges for mask makers in terms of mask write time and quality. Today, multi-beam writers have addressed these challenges. The multi-beam writers fully support high volume manufacturing of ILT masks with very high accuracy. Constant write time can be found 
for masks of any complexity with minimal constraints. Also, a new curvilinear mask format is being worked on to address mask data increases. This is being done by having discussions in cross industry groups with participants from many different companies and roles in the tape out flow. And there is movement toward a common description, which can be more compact. At the same time, all parts of the tape out flow must be ready for any new format. And this will require many different hardware and software companies to tightly align and agree upon standards so that there's no missing links in the tape out chain from design to waiver. New curvilinear MRC is also ensuring mass manufacturability. However, generalization from Manhattan shapes is not always straightforward. Some measurements such as minimum area of a polygon may be transferable from Manhattan to curvilinear domains, but there are open and unresolved questions about what constitutes width and space violations, as well as what kinds of angular features can be allowed. For example, where is it appropriate to measure the width of a feature? And what types of features should we measure to say if something is too narrow or angular versus if something is just a small nuisance job or notch? And when does the transition from a narrow feature to a nuisance job happen? The concept of a polygon edge being a meaningful unit for geometric representation is not clear. As curvilinear shapes have many edges which are not discernible in a meaningful way, and do not have a mapping either upstream to the design intent nor downstream to a fractured mask if the multi-beam mask writers are used. And this causes a lot of difficulty in our standard intuition as to how to deal with these type of masks if edges cannot be used as a fundamental unit. In summary, curvilinear mass synthesis is production ready. Native curvilinear processing of ILT is naturally suited for dense designs as well as new curvilinear designs. Software and computing advances are expanding and curvilinear ILT adoption is being made on full chip applications. And of course, multi-beam mask writing is enabling high volume manufacturing of curvilinear masks. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.